Hello, welcome to another episode of the Truffle Forager podcast. I am your host, Ben Sweet. And on this podcast, we talk about all things truffles. Truffles and truffle dogs and truffle dog training. Anything and everything to do with that elusive, gourmet, underground, hidden gem that is truffles. And yes, they probably do grow somewhere near you. Uh, Most people don't know that they grow in the UK, but they grow in the UK, which is really cool. So without further ado, let me quickly tell you about today's episode. I'm sitting down with Chris Bates. Chris owns Black Diamond Truffle Trees. And that is a business that he started uh, probably five, six years ago now when he moved with his family to Perigord in the heart of truffle country. Perigord, you might recognize the name, um, the Perigord black truffle, AKA the tuber melanosporum truffle, AKA the the absolute top, top truffle alongside or next to um, the tuber magnatum, the white truffle. So this is like the premier truffle and he's moved to the the heart of this location, so steeped and steeped in truffle history. And so we uncover quite a lot of um, stories and, and, and things that he's discovered from just learning from the fellows and the, the fellow French old school truffle hunters who happened to just live around him. He didn't know he was moving to the heart of truffles when he moved there. I'll let you wait till the episode to um, hear his story in full. but. Um, That's a fascinating story. We go all over the place with this this episode, but one of the most exciting things, and I will just tease you with it here, is Chris believes that he has found a wild tuber melanosporum here in the UK. That's all I'll say. If you want to hear that story, stay tuned, listen to this episode. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, If you really like it, share it with someone else, and I'll see you in the episode. Take care for now. Cool. Hey, Chris. Uh, welcome to the Truffle Forager uh, podcast. Uh, really grateful to have you here. Um, I know this is going to be a good one, but yeah, no, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so uh, for anybody listening, this is uh, um, an interview, a chat that I've been really looking forward to having as soon as I've sort of randomly stumbled across. Uh, well, first of all, it was your, your business, your sort of truffle business, which I'm sure we'll talk about, um, and then just diving deeper into that. Um, I've realized you're, you're a British guy who's moved to France, got a truffle orchard now, kids, family in the heart of truffle territory. So for anybody listening, um, you know, for me, that sounds like a, a bucket list dream that you're, you're actually living. So ah. I really can't wait to dive into that. Um, and also there's a couple of things that we did in the background, um, of just having a pre-call, um, uncovering, a well, loads of little gems and little rabbit holes we can do- go down. But one particularly, just to whet the appetites of anybody listening at the beginning here, um, your story about the wild melanosporum truffle in the UK, which I'm sure we'll jump on in a second. But, you know, hold hold on to your seats, people, and wait for that story. For me, that's a really interesting one, particularly if you're a truffle nerd like me. Um, but, Chris, without without sort of diving too deep, too fast, because, you know, I'm, I'm feel like a bit like a rabbit, rabbit in a head, like with questions I want to ask you and things I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. But um, can you maybe just start with like, you know, how and you could take this anywhere you want. But how did you first learn about truffles and when did that sort of the, when did you get the bug? And maybe you got the bug with truffle uh, mushrooms or truffles. Or how did that start? And then what led you to the point of, you know, moving to France and then doing what you're doing now. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's quite bizarre because the actual story of us, um, uh, discovering truffles and starting to grow them here, um, it feels, uh, somewhat independent of the first time we ever actually encountered, um, <clears throat> the, the concept of growing truffles or cultivating truffles. I think it must be about 20 years ago or so. Um, my wife and I, we bought my parents who live in the Cotswolds, we bought them um, an inoculated truffle tree to plant in their garden, um, you know, not thinking very much of it. Uh, and we, you know, popped it in, helped them put it in there and left it there. It's still there now. And um, it's kind of now surrounded by larger shrubs and uh, it's looking, uh, it doesn't quite get the pride of place that maybe the ones in our truffle fields get. But it was... Um, it was back then that we, you know, it already <clears throat> obviously we knew about truffles and there was an interest in them, but um, it was then fifteen years, fifteen years later, that we find ourselves um, living and working in the UK, feeling that uh, you know, 
incredibly difficult to get on the the, the property ladder there. Um, uh, starting a young family we've already got one young lad and uh, we're planning on having more and um, I suppose we probably had these weird uh, delusions of disappearing off to uh, you know the darling buds of May and it all being um, you know apple orchards and uh, evergreen um, in in some kind of you know remote uh, part of um, southwest France and um and we started having a look around and uh, we view, viewed many houses and then we came across this place. And after we bought it, we then uh, started paying more attention to the kind of very local immediate, immediate surroundings. And we saw that um, there are a number of very strange kind of plantations, a lot of uh, very odd looking trees. I mean, you can recognize uh, an apple orchard and you can recognize um, trees that are being grown for timber. But there were these uh, very, very uh, regimented um, uh, oak trees, evergreen oak trees, the uh, Quercus ilex, the um, yeah, the kind of they mm. call it French oak, but it's the um, it's the holly oak, and we saw them planted in lines, um, definitely purpose planted. And the first question came to my mind is well, why are they all here? Because they're really no use as timber because they're very slow, you know, they're very slow growing. And you know they make some acorns. Well, that's not really worth growing anything for. And then it was like, well, what are they there for? So we started asking a few people, and they're like, oh, they're they're truffle trees. They're truffle trees. Oh, wow, that's cool. Um, go on. And then after a few more conversations and a, a few more walks and a few more observations, you see that these things are everywhere. And it's like, okay, so. We're surrounded by truffle trees. Got it. Okay. Quick, you know, couple couple, couple questions to the people with the largest uh, plantations. So, do they work? You know, do you get do you get any truffles? Are they is it is it is it any good? And they're like, yeah, yeah, works very well, thanks. Like, okay, well, you know, can you give me an idea? And they're like, well, you know, like last year, I just pulled out right you know, fifteen thousand euros worth of truffles. And I'm like, oh, right, that's pretty good then, isn't it? considering their plantation wasn't that big. And they're like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty good. And um, seemed, you know, very blasé about it. I'm like, right, okay. Then the reading started, the kind of semi-obsessive research began. And uh, within six months, we'd already planted around 100 trees. And then the following year, we planted another 200 trees. And it was just a case of get the trees in as quickly as possible. Um, yeah. And that's how we found ourselves growing our own trees because it was, it literally fell into our laps. Um, the, the kind of, the, the, the situation was perfect. You know, the region we're in is, is, you know, is one of the, if, if not, is, you know, is the capital of truffle land. And therefore, yeah, it was by just happy coincidence we happened to walk into this place. We didn't come here looking to kind of um, start up a vineyard, start up a truffier. You know, there was nothing like that. It was just that we came here, we had ideas, things we wanted to do with the place, how we wanted to try and generate enough money to survive, um, and then this suddenly appeared, and uh, yeah, brain brain went on on automatic, rapid fire. Mad. Nice, nice coincidence for sure, you know. Uh, yeah. So how it's long, actually, how long, it's a 50% how long very lucky coincidence. Just, sorry. So the first set of trees must have gone in then, um, must be five and a half years ago. Uh, the first first load of trees must okay. have gone back, yeah, five and a half, five, maybe four and a half years ago. My brain uh, uh, failed me slightly. So they're soon to produce so, or have they started? Well, they the shouldn't. Couple more in years, fairness, yeah. they're probably going to be another three years. I think they're going to start being three years. Okay. They usually say that when the... Um, when the brulee starts to develop under the trees, and for those uh, mm. of your listeners who, who maybe aren't aware of the brulee and the importance of it, it's um, it's this uh, small region underneath the tree which uh, looks like weed killer has been applied underneath the tree, such that the vegetation actually dies off. Um, the the as the mycorrhizae underneath the soil are um, colonizing, they actually release a, a number of toxins which actually kill. Um, the uh, surround that's like a herbicide so it kills off a lot of the growing vegetation grass etc so you can actually look down and see around the base of the tree this kind of ever growing air region around the base of the tree of kind of dying grass uh, and that's a very good indication mm. that you're then approaching like you know 
timers ticking now. It should be within, they say, once you see the brule start to appear, you should start to get truffles within within three years. And uh, a number of our trees have started to show these brulees, and we've been enforcing, reinforcing those with um, truff cultures that we can, uh, uh, sorry, uh, inoculated truffle medium. We can talk about that later if you wish. It's, um, so, yeah, I'm hoping it's going to be uh, around about three years. But what's quite nice is that because because where we are is so um, perfectly suited to them being grown, we're obviously growing them from, uh, you know, we buy the trees, they are inoculated, they are uh, lab verified to make sure that they have the correct fungus, um, uh, you know, uh, built into the tree, essentially. We can talk about mycorrhization later. But uh, it's, it, we plant those trees in this very good environment. But they're just growing around naturally. So this particular truffle, mm. which is you know, incredibly difficult to kind of you know uh, get going and find all this stuff, well, they just they just grow here. We take we take our dog out, and he just finds them. And you know, on our land, he he finds them. He he, he just happens to, to dig them up when we're going walking. Sometimes you turn around, and the, the little the little git's got his nose in the ground, and he's nibbling something. You're like, hang on, what are you doing? And he's 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 chumming one down. And you're like, you can't can't take you anywhere. You know, most of the time it's, it's pretty obvious. He'll dig really, you know, you go, oh, he's digging, and you know he's found something. But it's where it's those moments when you're just not expecting. I, like, for instance, about four days ago, it's now April. There shouldn't there shouldn't be any truffles in the ground. This is like the kind of truffle dead zone of the year. And it's like, why mm. why is why is he? Uh, yeah, he's popped a little truffle out of the ground. I I honestly don't know why it's there, but he's eating it, and that's making me slightly cross. But I'll let him get away with it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so they're, they're, we're very lucky that they that. are all over the land. Yeah. There was, um, uh, in one of my Facebook groups, there's a truffley Facebook group, um, a friend of mine, John McGowan, who was also on the podcast, He's he's been finding truffles up in North Wales, and mm -hmm. uh, he sent a post on, what was it, the 29th of March, and his dog has found, like, you know, a good handful of apparently very ah. ripe-smelling truffles, so... Who knows whether they're coming at the end? Yeah, of they the should be really right by that the time. Beginning of the season, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very interesting. I guess it's just a case of looking sometimes, you know, and just being prepared to look. There's probably not enough people out there looking all the time. So, yeah. um, so do you reckon? Yeah, exactly. The one that you've found was a maybe a late season or an early season. Do you or no, it doesn't probably? Oh, uh, I, I imagine it. I imagine it's, if it's a uh, late season, he found. Um, uh, well. There's there's a small amount of um, there's, there's a neighbour buying a very small amount of land off us at the moment. It's just it's just it's just very it's, it's almost connected to their house really well around their farm, mm. and um, they uh, they recently bought the house and we thought that it would be sporting that they can just you know have this little the little walnut grove that's next to their house because it is you know it should belong to their house. So they're currently we're going through the process of saying that to them, and uh, I was just walking around with the dog. Um, uh, whilst I was talking to the surveyor that came out to kind of, you know, check out all of the um, all the boundary points, etc. And um, I could see, I looked and I could just see under this tree, this huge, really well-developed brulee on a wild tree, completely wild tree. Um, and, I mean, the brulee was so strong, there was literally nothing growing there. It was It was almost as if someone had just, like, we did it by hand and then patted it all down and everything everything was gone and i just point out to him I thought, how, oh, you know, how far a, out did it like really from the tree out of interest well this is the strange thing because as as is often the case with um the larger larger trees so for instance if you have a tree like in the in, in our field at the moment the trees are you know the biggest ones might be one meter 70 tall the smallest ones might be only 80 centimeters tall if they're that mm. big and the tree is only like three or four years then the brulee is probably going to extend in a you know in a perfect disc ideally but it's not it's as close to a perfect disc as possible about 30 about, about pretty about 10 centimeters per year of growth rate so it's been in the ground kind of okay. four or five years you expect a kind of 40 centimeter 50 centimeter perimeter this kind of disc you know around the base of the uh, of the trunk and uh, that will be the um, yeah this kind of burnt area when it's on um, wild uh, it, you know trees that haven't been inoculated from um, a point of germination. Um, you find that they're slightly different. Reason being is because they're very they're not always entirely by themselves. The tree might be growing uh, with you know surrounded by some other 
uh, trees. And as a result, there's going to be a variety of um, host plants and a variety of, of different ectomycorrhizal fungi competing for that bit of turf. Um, yeah. And the and the battle of nature kind of you know ensues. So as a result, it means that you might get um, small patches located um, around a more mature tree. So this mm. tree, for example, was it, it was probably about a 50, 60 year old tree, and it had. Um, I'm trying to do it on the camera. Why not? Let's say that the the tree is the tree is my nose, and if that's the kind yeah. of the, the maximum extent of the root growth and that distance from the you know let, let's yeah. say it's around uh, five six meters you might get a little region here that was really heavily burnt and another one maybe that big over here so there were two sections where it had been clearly burning the the the, the vegetation removing uh, killing off the vegetation around it and it was, it was so strong you could see it, like wow look at that um and the rest, there, you know, maybe a couple of saplings growing and some other trees kind of competing away. Um, anyway, we, we went off with the, the surveyor, you know, just looking at the various but things that we had to discuss. And on the way back, just, you know, I was about to finish saying, you know, should we just have a, a, you know, have a quick sniff, see what, see what Dougie has a, you know, can, can dig up. And um, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, why not? And so I just said, you know, Dougie, fine truffles. And it, it is... Thankfully, with him, it is a case of just saying, "Dougie, find the truffles," and he just starts sniffing, uh, going berserk. And yeah, within within thirty seconds, he's found uh, two decent sized truffles um, in those regions. Actually, one out of each. Um, and of course, it begs the question: well, Why? Why is the whole? Why is what? You know, why is the entirety of the tree? Why is that perhaps not? You know, a, a beautiful even brulee. It could be to do with the the, com the competitive nature of all the different mm. um, other trees and the, the competing um, fungi in the soil. It could be, or it could be something far simpler, which is that we've got to we've got to we've got to work out why are the truffles there in the first place? Why why that why is there any you know uh, microization happening at this particular site on the ground? Why is that happening? And <clears throat> you know, there's obviously a truffle that's been eaten by something, probably one of the local wild boar, and the boar runs along one of its, you know, uh, its, its, its tracks that it makes. It's, they like to, you know, follow the same paths regularly across the land. And at some point, it's uh, done its business, probably under a tree, and then all of the spores contained in the truffle, the priceless little nibble that it's decided to devour, um, are then released into the soil. And then they get washed into the soil. And that, of course, then those spores will then burst free from their their, their ASCII, their, the, um, the, the sacs that contain the, the spores. And they then go, oh, I need roots. I need roots badly. And then they latch on to the nearest host that they can. And in that particular case, it may well be that you've got um, you know, a tree that is um, capable of forming an ectomycorrhizal relationship. So um, for those perhaps of viewers that aren't... <clears throat> quite so nerdy with these weird words as, as I, so ectomycorrhizal is meaning that it's um, um, like ectoskeleton, so it's, it's, it's a mycorrhizal structure, which is essentially like a hybrid, it's like a kind of root fungus hybrid. So uh, it's, it, it's no longer just a tree root. The tree root, it does not even exist in its normal state anymore. The fungus doesn't exist in its normal state. Kind of, they've blurred together and they've created this entirely new thing. Um, and that is what they and they always refer in, in common speech around here. They talk about the mycorrhizas. And if it's ectomycorrhizal, it means that the fungus is formed um, on the outside of of the root uh, structure. Um, with, for instance, the tube and melanosporum, they refer to it like a, a hand being the roots, and then the fungus kind of coats the outside of the roots and deforms them like a black glove. And you can see this under a microscope. You can see the effect it has. So these uh, these mycorrhizas have been um, have been formed by the fact that when those spores germinate, they then go. I need a host. I need something. I need to be able to survive. Uh, they see roots. They latch on. 
the tree is happy, of course, because the tree says, "Ah, oh, wicked! I've got these like little worker, these worker bees down at the bottom." You know, they've they've latched on. They've got these ins insanely thin, high faith threads that like can penetrate these horrifically rough you know, limestone, you know, rich soils, which are not very nutrient friendly, and they're not you know giving me a very good time. And so the tree's happy. The 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 fungus goes, "Don't worry, you know, I'll get the nutrients. I'll get you water where you know you'll." rubbish roots can't and then the truffle kind of says you know do you mind kind of give me some carbon in return and some other bits and pieces and the tree's like oh fine all right yeah you can have it and so they do and they've, they've obviously formed that relationship and so <clears throat> the relationship can obviously be formed in a natural way like i've just described of, of course it does i mean like the truffle has been farmed and oh, sorry it's been found um and eaten and has existed on this planet far longer than we've been inoculating the trees and so perhaps one of the reasons as i said that the the brulees are forming in specific places around the tree is that it's, it just happens to be that maybe it was a little toilet for a, a passing animal that had consumed one of the mm. truffles and spreads it around which of course as well makes us feel it's, it's really nice knowing if you find wild truffles on your land um you're like this is or, or you know nearby you're like oh this is great because not only is is, uh, is it showing that it's a great place for your truffle farm to start but it's also telling you that these animals are just spreading the spores all over the place they're almost like acting as truffle inoculation reinforcement armies that just march across the land making making your yields better um if, yeah it's, it's 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 brilliant what what's really interesting in that in that space that you said there about when most people we talk about this like in you know, animal spreading truffle spores um i don't know if you're aware of this i'm sure you are but like it was really interesting when i spoke to uh, uh one of my other guests professor paul thomas and during lockdown um you know when everyone's locked down he did an experiment with his mm. kids um which sounded really fun you know um and they discovered that wood lice would also eat the truffles and for up to 18 days after i think it was 18 up to 18 days afterwards they would still be pooing out truffle spores so it's like it's not just like the mm. rodents and the, yeah. the mammals and stuff it's it's pretty much probably and if, if wood lice are doing it as well there's probably a host of other uh creatures oh. and that are also spreading it which is mad super fast exactly Every, every yeah. everything's helping i mean and of course and it makes sense because you know these things have evolved so that they can spread and they've developed mechanisms mm. that do that the 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 tastiest whatever have survived and you know those the greatest aroma can be found the best i mean let's not forget of course these truffles are found under the ground if you're mm. going to be found under the ground you don't care if anything's got good eyes. You don't. You don't want to be good looking. You're not like, oh, look at me. I'm a. I'm a hot looking truffle. It makes no difference. All that matters is how much stink you can give off, um, and therefore hope of attracting something nearby. And then, yeah, something's wandering around. It's like, I can smell that. My ancestors clearly didn't die from eating it because you know, I'm not repulsed by it, and you know, I'll give it a punt. And if I do die, well, you know, I'll. I'll evolution will sort out the rest and so yeah everything yeah. you know so many things are going to be at work just spreading these things around um i think my um i think my wife actually she wrote a, an article on our site a number of articles we try to write as many as we can but uh sometimes we get a little behind with uh, the various other things wrong with but um she wrote an article um uh talking about how you know we feel at times that oh aren't we so clever we've worked out ways of inoculating truffle trees so that we can plant these large fields and we can make nature bend to our will right that's you know that's how you kind of look at it and then you start thinking stuff like hang on a minute this truffle has evolved millions through millions of years and different stages of development it's manipulating us to be so obsessed that we take up yeah. entire fields planting trees so that it may do better sorry who's who's being manipulated here is it us or is it the truffle or can we sort of pretend i've had the same i've had the same story i hope that for we can like magic mushrooms as well i've had the same argument yeah. given for magic mushrooms as well you know they've been like they're so clever they've mm -hmm. screwed up our brains yep. to you know spread it to the world to, to grow them and stuff but you know you're absolutely right i hadn't thought about it uh, like that for truffles yep. 
Um, talking that about were, finding. I mean, wild... but mushrooms though ha they're so cheeky. Oh. Though I mean, if you think about them, the the people always talk about the you know the wood wide web, and you know it's been oh wow the wood wide web, and look at how uh, mushrooms are connecting all of the trees and all the plants. It's it's incredible, isn't it? And then it's like well yeah, but they're also they're also doing similar kind of cheeky business with um, with the, uh, the the animal kingdom as well. Um, and of course, as as they happen to lie uh, as their own you know, uh, distinct species, you know, between animals and plants, you think to yourself, these guys are playing a pretty shrewd game, just sort of sitting there, kind of, you know, making everything work so well for everyone else and themselves a bit as well, of course. But yeah, mushrooms are <laughs> just an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. Um, talking about finding wild truffles, uh, when we spoke, you teased me about a very exciting story um, to do with the tuba melanosporum. And I wonder if, uh, well, first of all, maybe you could just introduce that as a species for people that have got no idea about truffle species. And then and then just share yeah, with us that, you know, lead into that story about and um, and because to set this up from my side you know as far as i know this this tuba melanosporum which arguably the king of you know truffles at least the black truffles or i maybe mm -hmm. people pronounce it in a different way the queen or whatever um doesn't natively grow in the uk by all accounts so um over to you chris mm -hmm. uh, is is this true <laughs> well the first thing i would say is that it does it has been harvested in the uk so yeah. People have dug tube melanosporum out of the ground in the UK. I think, um, I think Prince Philip's got a plantation in Wales somewhere. Well, he, he hasn't got one, probably right, of course. But you know, he uh, he did have one um, before he died. Um, and there are, I think, I, I, I think I know of three truffle plantations in the UK. Just a quick hint, you know, to your to your viewers, listeners, um, start planting them. They will grow, you know, <laughs> they will. I, I, I can think of a hundred sites where I can set up a very, very profitable uh, truffle plantation in the UK. But uh, so truff, tube, tube melanosporum is definitely in the UK. It, it is. It's, it's, it's you know, <clears throat> it's been published. There's, there's the, that mushroom exists in there. If it exists in a wild environment, well, maybe not. But then, of course, it, it, I think it's unlikely um, that it's not um, from my findings as well. Um, but mainly that if you've if you've got some of these plantations starting to spring up over the UK, then it stands to reason that something's going to eat it, run off, and drop its business, and then you know these things spread. They are so good at spreading around. So. You know, it's 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 only a matter of time before they are popping up um, um, you know, on the right soils, but essentially here, there, and everywhere. But yes, for us, um, it was uh, a completely it was by complete surprise um, during a visit um, two years ago. So um, our truffle dog Dougie, uh, he was still very young. I think he must have been only a year old or so. We uh, we went back to visit. Um, our families in the UK for Christmas, and uh, and it was on just Christmas Eve, and it was a it was a typical kind of flying visit because when we do go back, it's like well, let's say we're going back for ten days at a time. Well, then you think about the different members of family groups you have got to visit, and it's like right, you've got two three days at each one. It's just like get in the car and just just bomb around as as much as you can and see as many people and say hi and happy Christmas, etc. But uh, we found ourselves yeah, my my parents' house uh, on uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, I forget which day it was. I think it was on Christmas Day, actually. Well, actually, I think it was on both days. But uh, we were just we were just walking out in the uh, on on, on uh, paths that I've walked as a child uh, a thousand times. You know, routes I've taken my little bike along to go down and play play sports with my friends. And uh, you you're just out walking. You're not looking for anything. You didn't really think there would be anything. Um, and then. Um, yeah, you just turn over and see Dougie's just digging. He hasn't, he hasn't been told anything. You haven't, you know, there's been no instruction. He's just digging away. And you're like, okay. But it's, it's a very, you, you can see with him, um, and this begs the nature versus nurture question, which maybe we'll go into later, but he just kind of, something in his brain just kind of goes, uh, click. And then he's like, I've got to just dig. And he just starts digging frantically. It's like he can't control himself. And it's a very, it's a very specific dig. If he finds like a, a mole hole or you know, some sort of animal hole, 
he'll dig in a different manner. But when he's when he's on the, when he's got his little his little his little truffle snoot out, he's just like right, and it's a very you know recognizable dig. And yeah, a few minutes later, he's kind of you know a truffle pops out of the ground. You're like, great. Um, and yeah, it was within about I don't know twenty minutes, half an hour, and he he found about seven eight truffles. Um, and I mean it's. <laughs> To some of your listeners, I'm going to sound, we're going to sound crazy here, but we're like, well, yeah, it's a bit cold, you know. We've, we've got to get back, you know. The, the, you know, the kids, the, the kids are probably climbing up my my parents' like legs and stuff, and you know, we weren't we weren't like going. Oh, this is our chance. We're going to like you know cash in on lo- loads of you know these 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 Cotswold truffles at pace. You know, we're not going to go berserk. Um, but no, we're just like that's fine. We'll head back now with our with our little bounty that we'd um, collected, and we. Obviously, got them from various sources, and <clears throat> it was obviously <clears throat> late December. Now, as it's late December, of course, it could be the um, summer truffle, the autumn truffle. They are, I believe, genetically identical, though they're just because of the place they grow, they 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 have slightly different harvest times. Um, but that is the that is the predominant truffle found in the UK. It's it's very common, I believe, in the UK. Mm. Um, and uh, quite widespread um and so we knew that we'd found some of those the easiest way to test of course is i mean you pick it up that's another great thing about truffles you pick you pick them up you're like it, it's this little black knobbly lump <laughs> smells of truffle and there aren't really any kind of um you know look in your mushroom guide it doesn't say like oh yeah it could be um the death cap truffle you know it's great because you know that there's nothing that's going to like kill you in two days in a very slow and painful way so it makes things a lot easier in terms of if you're gonna if you're gonna go uh, mushroom foraging truffles isn't a bad one to go for because there are the, you know there's not death around every corner then anyway, we kind of take them back and of yeah. course you have this little black knobbly um smelly lump and you get the little uh, nail brush on it in the sink and you wash off the bits of soil and then you can you can see it more clearly and what is um Often the case is that when you when you, you you grate a small section like with a microplane, you'll take a little corner off the off the truffle, and it will reveal the um, the, the effectively the species you're dealing with. In, in wild situation, you you know that in the UK it's most likely going to be the 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 summer truffle or mm-hmm. the autumn truffle, same thing. But uh, the, it's it's a, it's a type of uh, black 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 summer truffle. So um, and it instantly reveals itself to be of such because the interior is a, a very cre- it's a creamy color it might be a kind of maybe a nutty kind of color but it's 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 light it's a light colored truffle in the center it's black on the outside whiter on the inside it's, it's just you know it's very recognizably lighter and um that was the you know for the majority of the the the, the, the truffles we found there oh well, the num- say six of the truffles we found that's what we found. That's what we had. We had little white centered truffles, creamy, creamy centered truffles with a with a black outside. That's not like I'm describing chocolate now. Anyway, so you have um you have those and they're like popped on one side, fine. Another different truffle gathered from a slightly different location, one which more akin to what we have here, um, that came out of the ground, and upon grating that, we noticed that the inside was black. Now, if the inside's black, that's um, quite unusual um, for that to be, you know, a weird subspecies of the summer truffle, or something's gone wrong, or you know, it's just a kind of freak nature. It's quite unusual for that to be the case. Uh, the perfume, as well, was you know, the aroma was very strong, and uh, some people might be listening, going, "Ah, but is there a chance that that could be the winter truffle, which is a uh, tuber brumale?" Um, the kind of, I suppose, the main truffles that we do with around here are going to be, uh, yeah, uh, 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 the tuber menlosporum, tuber brumale, which is the one you, you don't want. You don't want that getting in your uh, in your truffle plantation. But people wondering, you know, you know, oh, could it be this one? Well, it's quite easy to distinguish one from the other, and that is that if you rub the the surface, the gleba of of the truffle, you actually find that with the tuber brumale, it will actually just rub off. Like kind of like the mm. skin of a new, really new fresh new potato. If you just rub it, the skin will just come off. Um, 
and also there's a slight smell with that one there's a slight slight whiff of tar on it um hence why you don't want it in your truffle plantation because because of this you know, um, property it's not um as in demand as the as the the, the the black winter truffle it's a bit annoying actually with the nomenclature yeah. why they went for tube melasporum you know big hitter and they call that the black winter truffle and then they call this the other one the winter truffle um yeah, make them more it's, it's, yeah, so that's one minefield that's, yeah, it's it's in sometimes I get I get a little bit frustrated and I kind of if I ever see gardening programs, people talking about plants and they kind of start waxing all these Latin names. I'm like, I don't I don't get this. Can't you just call it like a daisy, you know? But actually when it comes to truffles, I think it's really important to kind of just go, right, it's this this is the one I'm dealing with, you know, tube melons boring. So anyway, back to the original question. Yeah, of course. Um you're grating into it. Glebus staying on the truffle. You also look at it, and frankly, after having handled a lot of truffles out here and seeing thousands and thousands of truffles out here, you can see you, you can you can see the differences. And seeing the black inside, smelling it, going, okay, this is you know, this is the real McCoy. Then I started doing the researching, and it's like, oh yeah, but it's never been you know, tuber has not been found in a wild situation in the UK. And I'm like. Well, I contest that. My dog contests that. Um, maybe it's time to, you know, report that information. You know, th there's not like a kind of a truffle directory I could just like write to and say, you know, hello, dear truffle people, that you know, I believe I found this. And of course, I didn't have the opportunity to do any like, you know, severe. I didn't have a microscope. I couldn't start looking at the uh, the, the, the 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 spore sacs under a microscope mm. like I'd, I'd be able to do here. I, I didn't have that ability. It was, it was Christmas, and to be honest, I didn't <laughs> I didn't care. I was just planning on getting enough sleep, survive, um, ensuring that my three kids had a great Christmas, and saying hello to my family and, and friends. Yeah, for me, it's no it's no mass. It was no massive deal at the time because we we find them all the time here. Uh, finding one there was like, well, yeah, maybe now. It's only afterwards when I start reading out that it appears that they're not as common as I'd been led to believe. So after that, we decided to write to a few publications and saying, just to let you know, um, we've we've um, we found some truffles, and we wrote first to Country Life, and we'd we'd already featured in Country Life in a, a previous issue. It was about uh, luxury products and gifts and stuff and they, they featured our business because they they thought that people might be interested in that kind of thing and they were which was great thanks very much country life um and when we wrote to them this time they said oh uh, that's definitely a cotswold matter i'm like okay and they're like yes so right to cot you know cotswold life all right i'll write to cotswold life no near the same sort of magnitude of publication but we'll do it nevertheless so we write to them and a guy writes back he's like, oh this is great yeah and i'm loving the pictures of your dog yeah do so you know they did a nice like Four page article, you know, loads of big color photos of the dog and the truffles found, etc. etc. Um, and we mentioned about the um, uh, tube melon sporum being found, or at least we believed it to have been found, just went um, over their heads, did it? <laughs> um, I, I, I'll be honest, yeah, I think so, but but then yeah. I think from from on a, on a very quick side note, and try and try and drag me and my tangential self back to to my origin in a second, but. Um, cause I do sometimes just vanish off at the side, just, just drag it back, slap <laughs> me back right. into shape. But I, it's, um, only after moving here, do I feel like actually a lot of the mushroom world is literally going over the heads of a lot of the people in the UK. Not, not in a mean way, of course. It's just that it just isn't as big a part of the culture as it is here. Mm. You know, you'll hear occasionally tales, um, of people saying like, um, Oh yeah, you know all these cheeky Italians coming over here in autumn and emptying our forests of all the seps. You know the the, the porcini, the you know the beautiful penny bun um, uh, mushrooms, delicious, amazing mushrooms. And <clears throat> most of the people in the UK are not touching them. They don't go off looking for for sep. I would totally recommend it. I mean, with mindfulness and med meditation being the kind of you know, the hot words at the moment. Go looking. Go look for some seps. It'll it'll chill you right out. It's one of the most pleasant things you can yeah. do. Just gently strolling Absolutely. through a woodland after the rains with a small stick, just brushing things. You have to walk at you know a quarter of the speed. You're breathing. Right. It's wonderful. You're smelling these wonderful autumnal smells. It's, it's perfect. Just just do it. But you know people are going from Europe 
from France as well. And they're, get, they're just pining into the UK and literally hoisting it, 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 or heisting a, a, a ton of these mushrooms out and just taking them back and selling them. Um, and I feel like it's a kind of a, it's something that's been lost in the UK. I think the kind of understanding of mushrooms, foraging for mushrooms, it's, it's just it's not being handed down um, from generation to generation like it still is being done here. There's definitely that, uh, you know, pass it on uh, a mentality here where I think it's less so over there. So, yeah, I think uh, when it, you know, back my tangent now. Um, so with it com- when it comes to the truffles, I think it's, it's very clear that um, it does go over people's head because most people go, oh, it's a truffle. And they go, okay, I've heard of these things. They're like, are they, aren't they like some weird underground mushrooms? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. And that's, that is actually the majority um, of people just think it's just an underground mushroom. Um, nothing wrong with that. I mean, there are plenty of wonderful food things that I know nothing about. Um, but it just so happens that there's a lot more to it than that. Um, and, of course, where it becomes much more interesting is, is that, I mean, as... Anyone in the truffle business will rightly state the quality of the truffle is all in the aroma. It's it's everything. Everything is about the aroma, and it's therefore it's to do with the chemicals, the the, the compounds inside the truffle that are responsible. These very volatile um, chemicals that are released by the truffle. Those are the things you're after, and it's like, well, okay, so different truffles does that mean they have different amounts of these chemicals well yeah exactly that's exactly what it means uh, in in the case of like the, the, the summer truffle um, they have similar uh, profiles aroma compounds um, to the, the perigord truffle the tuber melanosporum except the amounts of the compounds uh, differs greatly so although the tube menisporum costs around 10 times the price of the summer truffle. So in the UK, I don't know what the price might be going for. It might, might be a thousand pounds a kilo, it might be 1500. But, uh, and then the summer should be around about 100, 150 fresh. It certainly would be that over in France. You think, God, that's a bit of an increase. That's, that's 10 times the price. That's an, you know, I, I'm not spending 10, 10 times as much for this this uh, this, mm. this truffle. If they say it's a bit better, well, actually, you know, after studies, they found that the tube melasporum happens to be a hundred times more potent than its uh, its kind of its 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 cousin. So as a result, you're actually getting ten times value, ten times you know better value for money by going with the tube melasporum. Um, yeah, so it kind of it did go over their heads a little bit, perhaps. Um, I mean, they write about a thousand things a week. Why, why would a small detail like that be of any interest? Um, it only then came later that after we'd had this article published, and it was a very, it was a very beautiful article, and it was, it was I mean, I'll be honest, it was, it's funny because they were like, make sure we get loads of pickies of the doggy. And you're like, all right, here's some pickies of the doggy, and, like, oh, and like almost the whole thing is just this, just. He pictured this really super cute truffle puppy who, I mean, looked like just like a little fuzzy ball and this little brown nose poking out the end. And it, it just looked like a kind of a truffle hoover with a little with a button on the end. It was it was adorable. Yeah. And, you know, the, you know, the readers are probably like, oh, you know, give us more of Dougie the truffle dog. And you're like, yeah, fair enough. Actually, he is. He's really cute. Um, I can see the appeal there. But then later, I, I don't know how much later, maybe a few months later, we then got. We then got contacted by Country Life again, saying, we saw your article in Cotswold Life. We thought we'd do an article now on it, truffles being found in the UK. And I'm like, oh, God, so we, I, I did write to you about this a few months ago. Could have saved a bit of time. And, um, and, then, they, and then we set up a, a kind of a video call chat with the guy that was responsible for writing this big article on uh, on truffles and um and he starts right and i was to explain to him about how yeah and it's actually very likely very likely that we happen to find um achieve menace borum in the uk and um and we're trying to play that as being quite a big thing um i said it's impossible we i can't 
scientifically verify it. Only, only all the information mm. I have. But it was uh, it was fascinating that women like okay, so we speak to this guy for like an hour and a half. He's, he's getting absolutely bombarded with information. Great, 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 great. Comes to writing the article. There's this tiny little section. It's like maybe one or two paragraphs, really small section about of the stuff that we've done or the stuff we're doing. And it mainly focused on some guy from I don't know, it'll, some some very cliche name. I don't know to do with something something truffle company whatever and and it was someone speaking from there and it was like well which and it was just it, it, it kind of almost glossed over um that piece some of the stuff yeah. we were trying yeah trying to raise but it's like well do you know what? <laughs> it doesn't bother me because of course if if, if i mean if, you know, if if the reason for truffle prices um if truffle prices are d directly related to their rarity or you know that's that it's it's only going to be beneficial to me if it's harder to be less people are finding them but yeah yeah so that was the, that was our just, tale just to um finding them in in the in the consorts just to bring it round to back into like because one of the things that i think you're in a unique position to be able to share with me and i guess with you know everyone in the uk listening everyone to be fair everyone else in the world listening but um mm. really interested to dive a bit deeper into like the truffle scene in France and particularly where you are and, and what your experience mm. has been there. And, and I guess to, to, to possibly set you up with a question there, like what, what, what was your first few experiences with regards to diving into the truffles after you'd realized that there's truffles there and you spoke to a few people, but um, can you just sort of shed some light on that and, and what makes it special or different to perhaps other places? Well, I suppose <clears throat> they're incredibly proud. I mean, they're incredibly proud people anyway. Um, I think if you're to try and get, you know, uh, uh, the best way to visualize it in terms of, uh, you know, for, for people un unaware of this kind of attitude and behavior in a, in a, in a people, I would, I'd probably start saying, well, think about, think about Bolognese sauce. And then like, oh, what's he on about? Well, Bolognese sauce, right? you, you go over to, to Bologna you, you, and you go, all right, so, so you're going to play, who cooks the, the best ragu around here? And they're like, we do, we do. You go five minutes down the road. No, we do, we do. Ooh, hang on, what are you talking about? You can't both do it. It's like, no, no, we did it. For, we invented it. No, no, we invented it. And then eventually they all agree that actually, you know, mama's is the best. And that's just how it is. And so there's this, there's this, there's, there's this brutal kind of like pride and like, you know, we are, we know it's, it's, we're so protective of, of the things that we hold dear, that our traditions, things that have been passed down, food cooking, you know, all that kind of heritage is, is, is very heavily guarded here. And, and with the truffles, that's, uh, that's definitely the case. I mean, it's called, um, you know, the Perigord truffle, um, it's referred to as the black winds truffle. It has another name, the tuber melanosporum. So going back to the, you know, the the big hitter truffle, kind of of the black truffles, it is yes, the the best in the world. I mean, as an Englishman, <clears throat> you know, us Six Nations comes on. It's still England all the way. You know, I think I think France. I'm sorry, but it's going to be a few more years before I even think about waving a flag for you during that. But you know, I'm 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 an Englishman. I'm here, and I see that when they are talking. Uh, about truffles they say the french believe that the perigord truffle is the best truffle in the world they do they're like no the the, the perigord truffle is the best and many of your listeners um who will say no no no, no i've heard it's the white the white Pied, you know uh, truffle from from alba the, the, the piedmonte truffle um uh tuba magnatum uh is the finest in the world and it's like okay um go to italy what would they say don't even bother. We're not. We don't have to go there. Of course, you know what the Italians are going to say. Um, so there's, this, you know, there's, there's this, there's already a battle between like, you know, whose truffles are the best in the world, and then it'd be like, oh well, obviously it must be Tuba Magnatum or you know the the, the 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 white truffle from 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 Piedmont, and it's like, well, is it that that's the best, or does it just go in line with all kind of truffle behaviour and? Um, uh, <clears throat> It's the word I'm looking for. Doesn't matter. But, but going along the, the lines of truffles and what they're, why they're in demand is that they are incredibly rare. So the reason that people might say that tuber, the, the white truffle, 
the white Italian truffle is the best is because it commands the highest price. Well, you know, you only have to watch the that great film, The Truffle Hunters, I think it's The Truffle Hunters, um, to understand why they're so expensive. You've got people going out in the mm. dark, in the wild, and they have to dig down like 30 centimeters with special spades. And they're hunting these things, and the competition is rife. People are dying. Dogs are being poisoned. It's carnage. You know, it's so rare. Let us not forget for a second, the reason that these truffles, the primary reason that truffles are so expensive is not because of their quality. It's not because there's some incredibly, uh, incredible nutrient dense thing that's going to suddenly turn you into a, you know, 20 year old from a seven year old. It, it, it doesn't have that. The primary reason for their price is their rarity. Um, and of course, that then stands to reason that the white truffle, as it's as yet, inverted commas, as yet been unable to be cultivated um, in a plantation. That's well, scary. it's yeah. by far it's by far the rarest truffle. People are just climbing over each other to try and get some because it's so rare, and as such, then the price goes up. It's the same thing with the you know the perigold truffle to an extent. Is the fact that it is an incredibly rare truffle, even with the number of truffle plantations kind of springing up, and they are springing up, especially around here. We've noticed um, a little bit sadly some of like, oh no, that piece of land's been done as well now. It's just. When we're looking forward to, if we're thinking, you know, buying more land, it's like that one's off the menu because so and so is planted another five hundred trees or another two hundred trees. It's like okay, but the rarity aspect comes into it. So, yeah, you know, what's the best? What is the best quality? Well, if we go back to that, the old adage, which the quality of the truffle is all in the aroma. You'd have to say, well, it's when you pick the truffle up, as you see them all doing at the markets, and they're eyes closed, huge nose in action, sniffing on this truffle, it's the smell that wins. Um and you know, they won't they won't care if they're black or white. They just want to have a truffle with an amazing aroma that they can then put on their food. Um and to go back after another one of my classic tangents to your question about you know what was our first experience? <laughs> well, the first experience is that you know, we moved here in july uh we start seeing the trees and therefore went, Ooh, what's going on start asking questions and then you start hearing about um uh, yes the annual martel uh um markets um you know selling truffles in this period the the, the sarlat of you know uh, fet fet de truffe and it's you know the, the big kind of sarlat truffle party of the year and you're like okay i'll i'll rock down there and have a look so you know straight so away thing, you're there so that's a is that a market festival type of thing in the area near yeah. where you are that happens once a year? Yeah, yeah. Like a multi when, yeah. whenabouts is that? I'm very curious. So that's uh third weekend of January every year. Okay. Third weekend of January. And it's amazing. Uh it really is. It's uh it's a, it's a spectacle. It ha it helps that it's in one of the most stunning medieval towns in the world. You, you know, you're just kind of just dribbling from the architecture alone, and then you walk down um, through these you know na narrow uh, cobbled streets, and you you kind of arrive in the centre, and the the place just stinks of truffle, and and it's quite mm. you know easy to understand why because you look around and you realise that there's there's probably several million euros worth of truffles just in that space right then and there i mean you kind of then think things like why is not anyone kind of just you know staging a truffle heist here uh obviously it'd be a bit of a stupid place for all those people but then you actually hear and then you go really you find that people have, have there have been truffle heists of warehouses in provence where people have actually raided truffle warehouses in the night where they've been stored and they've gone off with like millions of euros worth of truffles you know like they really are black diamonds. I mean, this is serious. This is serious money. The, 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 you're talking a thousand euros per kilogram. That's that's good going. But yes, yeah, so we walk into Sala. You go. This is magnificent. They have the um, uh, they have the the kind of central area. The central marketplace is is filled with vendors. Um, all in their kind of you know their token, their, their white chef's gear, and they're all cooking um, a, 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 a incredible spectrum of, of truffle treats and delights, savoury and sweet, um, making use of the Perigord truffle. You know, they're like, this is our thing. This is our truffle. This belongs to us, and this is us showcasing it in its glory. And people are there. Um, 
more often than not, actually, the sun is, is, is shining on the square, blue skies, people wrapped up warm, though, and they're drinking wine, they're standing there chatting. There's a smell of kind of um, fresh foie gras being cooked and truffles everywhere. And then you look to the, the sides and you see there's kind of like, you know, the serious truffle tent. And the truffle tent is like this, this uh, row of maybe, I don't know, 100, 200 people and these, these baskets in front of them with their you know that week's catch and and mm. you just you kind of you know, you're just kind of walking around and they're like oh you know please please have a smell uh, and you're like oh very nice thanks very much and then you go on to the next and they're like go on have a, have a sniff and you look and you go this is just ridiculous there's so many truffles here how can there be so many self-indulgent people who are prepared to just fork out on how are they gonna all this money is going to be Change, you know, transferred today. It's going to change hands today, and um, they're, they're buying all these truffles. And then, of course, you look down, you see like a basket, and it's just like there's a truffle like this big. And and it might be, actually, this year when we went, there were, there were two right next to each other. These these two things are small, they're the size of of grapefruits. They're like weighing one one and one point two kilograms. One was nine hundred uh, mm-hmm. grams. And you're like these, these things. These things are a thousand euros a piece. And and these wow. and these guys, this has come. This has come from one tree. Uh, I mean, not necessarily both of them, but one of those truffles came from one tree. So someone's gone out there with their dog, maybe another method, pig, fly, whatever it might be. Go into those later. And they've gone. The doggy's gone sniffing out. Oh, and it's like you know, they find the top of the truffle. They start digging around it, excavating carefully, and then suddenly they're like, "Whoop!" Out comes this lump. It's like you know, large, super large potato. And they just put it into the basket happily and go, "Great," you know. That was a good hourly rate. And off they go to market. And the thing that I think surprises the most, this is the bit that was really odd, is that you look around, you go, yeah, there must be, I don't know, half a million, two million. I don't know how many euros worth of truffles there are just sitting in this market, stinking the place out. You think, what are they going to do with the ones they don't sell? You know, I mean, like, they, there's going to be loads left over. What are they gonna, because they're just going to rot. What are they going to do? You turn around an hour later, they've all gone. And you're just like, right, they've all gone. I wasn't expecting that. They've, they've all sold. And, and as, as we've said, they're not cheap. And they've all gone. And it, I suppose, brings home the message again that the French are obsessed with food. Like, in many ways, the Italians, they're just obsessed with it. They, they just live for their gut. They just, they, just, they just live for it. And so mm. it sounds reason when it comes to wintertime, Christmas time, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're looking for something to be excited about. They're just like, it's, it's the truffle. Just give me the truffles. And, and they're happy to hand over the cash. You see the cash being handed over, and you're like, oh, my word, this is just crazy, the amount of money that's changing hands here. And, and yeah, and they all go. They all sell. Um, and then uh, they're, and they're, and they're incredibly proud of, the, of, their, of their truffle. And then you, of course, go, well, why, how can all these things sell? I mean, surely, like, you know, there can't be that much demand. And then actually realize that when you compare France now to how uh, it was, I think, 100 years ago, I believe that France is only, as, uh, as, you know, as we speak today, about 10% of the production yeah. um, of Perigold truffles it was 100 years ago. Um, after you know, in terms of wars and problems like that, people coming back, people not coming back, and information being lost on route. People were very protective; they didn't have methods of cultivating the way we do today. There's been a lot of information lost, and the amount of the, tr- the amount of truffle production in France declined dramatically, and the rarity therefore goes up, and the price goes up with it. These guys, you know, just like you could just you can just see it; they're just absolutely obsessed. They're they're just obsessed, and they're they're now so obsessed that they're saying, "Well, look, this is look." Let, it, Hello, everyone. We know it's you know Latin name Tube Men's Forum, but this is the Perigord truffle. Um, why on earth, if everything else in France has been uh, given you know its own protected status? I mean, even the walnuts that you know we grow around here in in, in the Perigord have their own um, uh, appellation controle. They have they have a protected status of origin. Um, st- you know, state like like with champagne or with um, epoise cheese or um, brie de mot, all the various products all over France. There's so many of them. They're protected because it's like this came from this place. Um, the origin is important, and it's important to protect the, that uh, that product. And the the black truffle uh, hit the you know, has not got that status, and they're fighting for it. They're trying to get the truffles of the Perigord recognised as 
Appalachian Control a, um, or Protégé because they, they want people to go, hang on a minute, you know, I'm getting champagne truffles. I'm getting Perigord truffles, not just Perigord truffles made in, um, you know, Italy or, or, or Provence or Spain where there are a lot of these truffles growing. They want these particular ones. And we, we happen to be lucky that it, it's not just that truffles do grow where we are, but um, it seems to be You're well in agreed. That area by. Where it... we, we're in the area where obviously the truffles do grow, but not only, so not only yeah, are we in this, this area. Uh... Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. And I mean, recently our road was just called, renamed, literally just about a month ago it was renamed to uh, Route de Truffier and you're like brilliant the root the root of the trufflers basically um, truffle. and the root trufflers it's good isn't it and so it's 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 interesting that um, yeah not only we are we in this region thankfully of uh, the world that grows uh, that, is, that is home to this truffle well of course it's home to it isn't it and then it's named after this region but not only that but the soils here it's not just about the limestone in the soil that allows you to grow the truffles because they require quite a high pH soil, you know, 7.9 being about optimum. Um, but they really, they want these kind of iron rich limestone soils for the best quality truffles. Um, and it's, it was so nice when I was reading through a truffle book once and I saw this picture showing the kind of the, the different layers and substrata of the, of, of, the, of the soil, like kind of like a cut through of the terrain. It had like a little bit of tufty grass at the top and then below about 40 centimeters of this reddish brown limestone rich soil. And then underneath that, like shattered limestone uh, base. So basically from there, it's just like limestone down for ages, but it's all kind of shattered. It's mm. not just like huge rocks that you could take out and quarry. It's, it's, it's cracked and, and, and battered up. But there's just about this kind of, like, yeah, 40, 40, 30, 40 centimeters of, of this red soil above it. And I was just like, I saw this picture and I was like, this looks dangerously familiar. And literally at like 200 meters from this house, there's an area, I think, where they must have cut away for the road. And it's like they've sliced it down and it shows the exact photo. It shows the exact photo from this book. And I was like, this is brilliant. It's, it's about 34 centimeters of perfect red limestone rich soil, a little bit of tufty struggling grass on the top, and then shattered limestone beneath. And it's like, you know, not only is the soil there for, therefore, hopefully, you know, it's, 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 it's geared up to produce the truffles, but it's also geared up to produce the best quality truffles and that is what i think the guys around here when they're trying to get their protected status for the truffles of the perigord when they're trying to get that they will be going they'll be going along these lines and be saying this is the home of of, of the perigord truffle obviously tube melanosporum this is where it came from don't you forget it and the truffles from here we believe are the finest in the world and we're also going to say that but they may well be right and as such uh we demand that they be have protected status and as such, it's very likely that um, along, if they do achieve that protected status, then the, the price of the truffles here will be, of course, even rarer because the you know, proportion of them has, has dropped. Uh, the amount coming out of here is tiny I mean, to, to the rest to of me, together. And that's good. To me, partly, it just sounds it sounds a bit like it could mainly just be a, a marketing ploy to, to get prices up to a large extent. But why not like you know you, you should do it anyway like because i from the mm. a book that i read about you know the alba white truffle you know mm. white truffles don't just come from alba you know that's a that was a marketing ploy mm. by whoever the chap's name was you know and fair fair play to him he probably was the italian <laughs> I, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't know the uh the origins of how and when was well, this about like some of the ones being found in they, they find them in croatia as well don't they the white truffles they found some white truffles in places like croatia as well i mean they're all over europe probably, to be honest probably albania over. and things like that um, yeah 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 um, it's in their interest it's in exactly it's in the are... interests of the go on for sure for sure um i but i am interested in you know how you how you would judge quality of truffle beyond just picking it at the right time of maturity and ripeness and stuff, which is an interesting area of explanation. And I guess that's when you get into the science and would need to do lots of studies of soils. And, and then at the end of the day, it yeah. all comes down to 
taste and taste preference as well and then that goes for what is the best chocolate it's taste and taste preference absolutely so. exactly and that's and that's that's yeah exactly yeah. what i alluded to before it's like well rarity equals price not necessarily uh quality so you know will will we ever know well yeah. it's like art isn't it it's in the eye of the beholder and it's um and yeah it's I, I, I'll be completely honest with you. I think truffle's fantastic. When I go out and I find a truffle with my dog, um, and I see his, there's a little excitement, and he starts digging, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and, and then I get down on the ground because, of course, you know we're now wise up to the fact that if he sticks a claw, if he sticks a claw right across the top and cuts a bit off it, that is going to degrade much quicker. So it's either going to last less time in my fridge, or it means if I go and then sell it. Yeah. then someone's going to turn around and say, I'm sorry, this is damaged. I can't give you anywhere near the price that I would normally. And it's like, oh, yeah. darn it. You know. So, therefore, as he starts digging, thank you, good boy, here's a bit of treat. Frankly, he doesn't even care for treats anymore. He just he just enjoys doing it. It's like, yeah, it's fun. You pull him back, then you get the fun because you're sticking your face in the ground. You're like a little doggy sniffling like a little piggy sniffling away, you know, picking up some of the snow. Oh, yeah, right. There's a truffle. You can smell it. And then it's a case of, right, well, you know, go for your trusty, trusty truffle tool, which is usually a screwdriver, actually. And you kind of start picking around the region and gently trying to ease up whatever's in there because you don't know its size. Um, and, and, and yeah, it pops up and it's great. And you pick it up and it's kind of like, you know, a beautiful, fresh, crisp. And you're smelling this truffle, and you're like, "Wow!" And you maybe take it back, and you have it with some some eggs or some, you know whatever it is. And you're like, "That's that's great," but I'm not going to lie, you know, pound, you know, pound for pound, I'm picking garlic, I'm picking tarragon, I'm picking you know a whole host of other things because the price is just ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It, as I said, it's to do with the rarity. They don't taste. A thousand or a smell, aroma being the quality, etc. They don't. They, you, you can't, how can you justify this? A thousand euro, a thousand pounds a kilo, for goodness sake. I mean, come on. It's just bonkers, isn't it? But that's the way it is. And at the moment, it looks like it's only going to go up because everyone wants a piece of the truffle action. Every gastro pub in the UK is like, oh, we've got truffles on the menu. Mm. Every chef wants his, wants, his, wants his bit of truffle on the menu. And as such, the, you know, the demand goes up even more. And the Although the challenge with this it. case, the challenge of this space, which I think there should be like laws or, you know, you've got restaurants that are saying autumn truffle with, you know, steak and chips or whatever it might be. And I've been served something that said on the menu, autumn truffle, and I had to send it back because it was just truffle oil. Uh, and to be fair, it was a fish dish and the fish was cold That's as well. Petrol. So there was two reasons, two reasons. <laughs> I sent it. A, because you're trying yeah. to make money out of us by saying, you know, autumn truffle. Uh, fair enough, they didn't put the word fresh autumn truffle. Otherwise, I really probably would have gone and like kicked off. But um, yeah, no, yeah. I think oh this, man, this whole truffle oil thing which is happening, which which grills me. Most people don't know about it. Well, they just think truffle it's just oil complete. Is, yeah, it's just utter yeah. deception, isn't it? But then, but of course, yeah. that's 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 classic. I mean, um, sadly, and it is uh, genuinely this it is tragic that this is built into human nature. This is, I mean, it's like, okay, w what have we got here? What have we got here? Okay, we've got this, uh, there's this There's this spice. What's it called? Saffron. Okay, what's the price of it? Uh, ridiculous. Okay, um, what does it look like? Yeah. It's uh, it's red, orange, and it looks like little strands of cotton. Does it now? Now, that gives me an idea. And then you realize that most of the saffron that's being sold is, is, a, is a mixture of little threads of nothing, uh, little bits <laughs> of paper, little orangey threads of paper. I mean, we actually we actually grow our own saffron here as well. Uh, why why not? We have oh, you know, cool. some of the some of the land we have. Um, as I said, when, when we were lucky in buying this this place, we were we were fifty percent lucky because half of our land, well, at least when the first chunk when we bought the house, half the land was perfect limestone truffle um, soil. Perfect, mm. wonderful, perfect, love it. Below our houses, there's, a, there's an incredible geological divide. Uh, and below that, the soil is, it probably would be okay, but it's not perfect. And so therefore we have not planted there and we're not going to plant there either. Um, and I might run a few experiments to see if it's worthwhile, but at the moment I have no plans to because um, especially as recently we bought another f uh, 10 acres of land above our truffle, um, our, truffle, our current truffle plantation, we bought another load of land above that and that soil is 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 equally perfect, if not more. 
can't say more perfect. That's just no. stupid. But it's it's very good. So we bought some more land up there, and it's like right, okay. But that lower land, it's like well, we'll do some other things. So we plant some of our own saffron. Why, why not? And it, and it grows. And we get a good harvest every year. But at least we know it's not made of little filaments of cotton thread or or bits of orange paper cut up in a cheeky factory mm. but as soon as as soon as people cotton on to the fact that you've got you know a cr- incredibly expensive anything but food stuff primarily let's talk about you know wasabi uh saffron even coffee things like you know finest blue mountain coffee etc and truffles well someone just then sits down and says like hang on a minute one 98% of the people buying this stuff don't have a clue what they're buying because they probably buy it so infrequently that they don't really know how to distinguish the real thing from fake. So why don't we kind of make a bit of a fakey, you know, sell it a bit cheaper. Everyone's happy. It's like, no, it's just plain fraud. Um, and yeah, I mean, for me, once you've had real truffle, I mean, God, uh, I, can't, I, I, I gather from your response, truffle oil, what is that? It's just so nasty. I can't even... I can't even imagine using that. It's 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 yeah. awful. And and actually, sometimes you see like a cooking program, you can see someone that's like, oh, I'm you know do this, and I'm going to finish it with a little bit of truffle oil. And you can kind of see like the Michelin star chef like raise an eyebrow. They're like, really? You're going to bung this yeah. basically pet- petroleum product on the dish at the end? And they're like, oh yeah, just just enhance it and stuff. And they just eat it. And they're like, all I can taste is this basically synthetic, disgusting truffle oil, and it is just overpowering yeah. and na- it's horrible it's it's really nasty stuff and it's just it's just not it's not worth going near but it's 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 appalling the, the labeling as well they try to get around it to get people to yeah to to make them buy this stuff it's it's awful our dog i mean this is this is the funny thing when it came to training our truffle dog or trying to reinforce the training because of um i mean the, the chemical found uh, uh dms dimethyl sulfide i my brain's like tired this morning. The yeah, chemical yeah. in, in truffle truffle oil is um, is a compound found in the truffle, but of course, without the other things balancing it out and the correct thing, it just is completely, completely wrong. Um, it's made obviously out of petrol in a lab and it's mank. But when we were training our dog, I was like, well, I'll just buy a little bit of this fake truffle oil. I knew completely that it's fake, but it was a, a way of me going, well, you know, I'll bung it on a little, little bit of tissue and I'll put that inside a ball and I'll throw it around and make the dog interested in it and blah 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 and it'll suddenly it'll find it and i'll treat it and blah blah, blah. The, the truffle training for it. he didn't want to know he honestly the dog there was is a truffle snob he, he was like I, no thanks and it only came later that then the uh uh um when using proper truffles he he just he just went to them Mm. So he, with a nose a yeah. hundred thousand times better than ours, he can certainly tell the difference. Um, but yeah, I can, uh, I can only feel sorry for you sitting down there thinking truffles on the menu, but really it's not because um, that stuff, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not very nice. Not very nice. I'm probably not gonna, you know, stand up and start, uh, you know, being a campaigner. But I think <laughs> in the future maybe. But yeah, <clears throat> I think there, there is, there is a need for that to, to come in. You know, the people couldn't, it shouldn't be. Uh, yeah, as you said, defrauding people who are none the wiser yeah. and profiting from it. But um, um, just to rewind a little bit then, and then because I'd love to, we've touched, we've spoken, and you've mentioned him throughout this podcast. But Dougie, oh yeah, yes, um, tell us about Dougie when you got him. Obviously, we kind of know why you got him, and we're guessing he came after yeah. the whole truffle plans were set in motion but yeah how how yeah. did you go about even sourcing Dougie um and then yeah. and then yeah how did you also, also train him up as well I know you touched on it then yeah, yeah. well um uh Dougie I want to get in there hang on I'll just uh, sorry to your viewers of this yeah, like Dougie it. Dougie come <laughs> he's probably out on a, he's probably out on a walk Dougie come finding his own truffles I do not hear the pitter patter of I do not. Yeah, exactly. I do not hear the piss patter of tiny paws. I think he might be out for a walk with um with my wife. Um, so, uh, yeah, Dougie. Um, he kind of fell into our laps a bit earlier than we planned. If I'm being honest, um, this is the danger of taking a very soppy wife and three uh, cute, excitable children round to a um, Legato Romagnolo breeder um, just to have a look at the puppies. I mean. What, what kind of idiot must I have been? I, I just kind of went round to have a look. But anyway, <clears throat> so to start from the beginning, um, there's a very, very good community here where we live. The, the people are wonderful. They're, they're incredibly welcoming from the start. And we 
don't know everybody, but everyone definitely knows us, which is kind of a bit spooky. Everyone knows us, mm. and um, we have you know lots of lots of people we talk to, and lots of people we exchange information with, and have and have you know, really good conversations. And we um, we met Dougie's breeder in the local um, night market in San Robert. So the, 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 the village closer to us is, uh, is San Robert. And it's one of the, it's, it's been given the kind of name of, you know, one of the most beautiful villages in France. It has a kind of like a, in a little plaque beside it saying it's a nice, pretty village. Go there and have a look around. It's really nice. And it is, it's a, it's a, it's a classic, beautiful French village. And we're, we're very lucky to have it there. Every summer they have these kind of, these night markets, these parties in the evenings. And once again, French being obsessed with food, you go into this old uh, 12th century kind of market square and there are vendors all around the sides. There are rows and rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of tables. About 1,500 people are going to be packed into this this uh, town, this village square, and um, there's music, there's entertainment, the sun, the warm, balmy evenings, local wines, local every, and they are selling everything. You know, it could be from mussels and things, you know, cheeses and sausages. They got a giant communal barbecue where they cook up your steaks and everything and anything you want. It's just, it's just obsessed over food once again. Um, and there's one guy standing selling some little, you know truffle toasts essentially and they happen in the summer so he's typically using either some leftovers from the the winter or, or some of his um his his crop of the the, the, the summer um truffles and um <clears throat> we're talking to him he already knows who we are and we you know just chatting etc etc and he's like oh well you need, you need to think about getting yourself a dog i'm like well actually we are looking at getting a dog and he's like well my mum breeds them i'm like what she's like yeah my mum breeds um truffle dogs i'm like well i know that there's only one type of dog that is you know officially allowed to be classed as a truffle dog and that is the legato romagnolo an ancient um italian breed of dog that was originally a lake dog um to retrieve birds but uh well, when there were some problems lake uh, things being you know they, they basically that was that use was put to an end and they then decided to retrain them up as um as truffle as truffle dogs and um so so he says, "Yeah, we've, my mum breeds uh, uh, these dogs." I'm like, "Okay, that's that's cool." I said, "Are these these truffles that you found?" He's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "With the dogs?" He's like, "Yeah, cool." He's like, "Well, yeah, my mum's got a litter at the moment." I'm like, "We weren't really thinking about getting one for a couple of years because we know that with our plantation, uh, it's you know it's a few years from now to go, and therefore we would have ideally given it another sort of." We, we've had him for what, three years or so, two, three years. And it's like, it would have been good to, you know, wait a little bit longer before getting him because it's kind of like um, a bit too early. Um, and anyway, it was like, well, you know, um, my mum's got kind of like, you know, uh, I think she's got one or two left. You know, you should just come and have a look at them maybe if you're, if you're interested. And we're like, um, all right, you know, where are you? And it's like, you know, five, five minutes down the road. So... If, you go down there with your wife, same day, and your three or, kids. Or... No, no, it's a, it's a, you know, a few days later, you've made a yeah. little, little rendezvous, and you, you go down there, and there's this little pen, and then there's these just little kind of fat guinea pigs, these fuzzy guinea pigs running around. I mean, they look like guinea pigs; they're just so ridiculous. This fluff on them, just hilarious. Um, they kind of look a little bit poodly, a bit poodly, um, and their hair never falls out, so it just gets longer and longer and longer, and they look more and more ridiculous. And you see these things, you're like, oh, no, I know it. I know it already. And then you see four sets of eyes turn on you, and it's just like, can we get one? And you're like, great. I've been so stitched up here. The guy in the market, he knew. He knew that the, by the time if we ever gone to see them, we'd be, never be able to leave without one. So we're like, mm. okay, fine. A little bit early, but, you know, we'll buy one of these, these truffle socks. And we're like, um... And when I say, you know, what have you been up to? Like, uh, what's the, um, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, how how can we help with the, the training? And the, um, the this guy's mother's just like, well, look, you know, they've already been basically trained from birth, and they were kind of like they they lived in, um, I suppose, like a, a little shed with a little paddock outside. That's where the puppies and the mother were, 
And this family has like, you know, the generations of the family. So there's the gran, you know, lying on a chair inside the house. And then there's the mother in with the puppies. And um, and then just outside in this little paddock, coming to the small area, there was just a mountain of soil, just a just huge mound of soil. And they just basically buried their truffles that they found and they've got loads in the freeze and stuff because they do they just find them everywhere and they just basically stuff them in the hill and these puppies are just basically just like they waddle out they even like uh, and it's very common for them to rub real real truffle oil onto the nipples the teats of the mother so that then when the puppies are you know suckling they are actually getting like you know couple of shades reinforced with the top of that deer and they're just like you know that there is kind of it's almost cruel they're kind of like going like mummy's love equals truffles or truffles equals mummy's love yeah learn that little puppy and the yeah. puppy they're like you know nuzzling away getting its meal meanwhile it's like <laughs> sniffing away getting this aroma and then they're just like you know they get a bit bigger and they kind of waddle out into this paddock and, and they're just like what do dogs like to do they like to dig in a garden well if they get to dig great but then they're digging and they can smell this familiar smell and they start digging around and then they're like oh yeah truffle and then the people give them the treats and so by the time we got dougie and he was about 10 weeks old he was already finding truffles. So, you know, and this, 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 this truly, it's, it's, it's very, it's very, it's very complicated. I mean, it's probably not worth trying to understand, but it's, I suppose it's a bit like when you see some sort of wunderkind musician, you know, it's often the case that it's like, so what age do they start? It's like two. And you're like, ah, right. Yeah. And it's not, it's not, you can't teach an old dog new tricks but it's just a hell of a lot easier to teach a young dog new tricks than it is not and if you can get them really young then that's great and then if you're thinking well is it nature is it nurture well if you can kind of just like go well i'll just get the best of the nature and mix it with the best of the nurture and i'll probably end up with a good product and so mm. the breed which just seems to be inherently brilliant at finding these troubles is just it's, it's, it's in its blood it just just wants to dig it wants to find things out with its sniffer and it it, 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 was, it wants to find the truffles and it's reinforced at birth it was reinforced for its you know its first 10 weeks that it spent at this uh, at this house and then we brought him home and um, it was like right well it's very important that we you know keep up Dougie's training so I better get on Google and work out you know the best way of doing it and uh, and and the, the owner and I will make sure you keep up his training and stuff and for some daft reason I'd never actually said well what would you recommend I saw the mound of soil um, stuffed with like truffles and I was like well I don't have such a That's mound such a great so... picture in my head that yeah, <laughs> yeah Treasure Island yeah so you ever, I mean if you speak to him at any point soon and if you could get a picture of that that would be so great to see that picture I've probably got a video I can send to you obviously I remember in. at the time oh yeah that would be amazing. I think I've got it no I think it might even be it might even be on our website if I think it might be on our website I think we put a video up of when we were going to look at them. If not, we'll have to write ask on it because it's just too cute. Yeah, and these little, you know, these little guinea pigs just attacking this mountain. And then and then the lady going, look, look, you know, and you're like, you know, there's a truffle in her hand. You're like, this is hilarious. And yeah, they're all just like dive bombing this mound of soil. Um, but yeah, we didn't have such a mound in our garden. I mean, these are, these are, these people know their stuff. They really know their stuff. Um, and so we're like, right, right, how are we going to carry on this training? And if, first thing. Google how to train a truffle dog. And I went down the routes that many will of, okay, I'm going to get myself some truffle oil. I'm going to get like a little bit of cotton. I'm going to put a drop of it on there. I'm going to wrap it in foil and then I'm going to leave it on the floor and the dog's going to be in the room. And when the dog goes up to it, I'll then reward it. And then after just that several times, I'm then going to hide it somewhere and then it's going to find it again and I'll reward it again. And this makes you know complete sense. It's an incredibly logical way to train a truffle dog. And I, I see why it's publicized, you know, publicized. And I, I, I maybe, you know, not that I necessarily need it, but I'd be fascinated to hear, hear your input on, on, on some of the, these matters and, and, and what you've been advised to do. But that seemed like a very logical conditioning um, process in order to achieve the goal. But it didn't work. He had very little interest in these cotton foil wrapped tennis balls that I was leaving around the house. He was distinctly bored by my process. So we're like, mm, oh, it's been a few weeks now and it's not going fabulously in, in all fairness. And then luckily the guys that we bought the uh, we bought Dougie from, they came walking past and um, 
they just said hi uh we thought that you know just to make sure you know hope that dougie's training g- going well um we thought you might want to use these just to help him with his training they just dump us a handful of truffles you're like oh thanks thanks very much that's cheers. that's really yeah. nice of you you're like cheers so we just we just found them up there you know 10 minutes ago i'm like what do you mean you find them up there yeah just up there well you just find them wild yeah they're, they're everywhere okay fine this is brilliant thumbs up so yeah it is just like truffle kingdom anyway i then went well okay i've got these things they're only going to stay good in the fridge for like you know maybe 10 days for truffle training person maybe a few weeks but he's going to start turning his nose up and quite literally you know after that time i'll freeze some of them but i'll I'll get going on it quickly it, luckily we did have a mound in the garden it was a it was a, a couple of tons of builder's sand that had been you know part of the renovations and stuff we've been doing here this massive mound of sand so I thought, oh, do you know what? <laughs> Why not? Took him over on the lead, knife and I. She's got him on the lead, like, you know, round the corner, not allowed any sneaky peeks. Although I must say, his eyes are rubbish. His nose is amazing. His eyes are hopeless. He just, he's, he's just, he couldn't see anything anyway. So I go over to this huge mound of sand. I stick my foot in about sort of 10 places to make um, a, dent in the, a dent in the sand. A few inches deep and in about three of those i just drop a truffle i cover them all up i wanted to obviously put a number of holes in there because i don't want him just going to the smell of my shoe you know he'll know where i eat or if there's disturbed sand he'll, he'll you know i, I don't want to leave anything to chance and then we kind of bring him over and we just like let him off and we're just like it was it was honestly it was, it was properly funny because i just <laughs> usually as anyone will know with training a dog you first teach them the action and then you introduce the word to back up the action so they then associate that action with that word you can't just say a word to a dog and hope that they know what it is because the dog doesn't speak your language and never really will it just does things by association but i just kind of amusingly kind of just said uh, almost to myself was like dougie find and he just like after a few moments just starts sniffing around and he's like, you know, see him having little flashbacks to back on the mound with Mama. And he's just like, and it's like 30 seconds later, pop, number one comes out. A minute later, number two comes out. Then number three, you're like, don't believe it. Okay, right. Again, repeat, drag around the corner, another 10. Bing, 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 bing. And you're like, this is just bonkers. It was just like, He's done. That's it. Training finished. Uh, go back to bed now, Dougie. Thank you very much. It was unbelievable to watch the fact that it just seemed to just come out uh, as a mixture of, I don't know, baby instilled instinct and just plain genetics just, just took over and he just went there, there. And then we progressed to taking him. Uh, we dug a bit of um, the actual truffle field itself, um, just actually just around the back of um, our, our, our garden and uh, turned that over and placed it in there and and we were just like find and he just did it and it was like oh this is great and then we met some other people um on some of the swimming lakes around here there were some fabulous some fabulous swimming lakes um to be enjoyed around here and there were massive beaches that they I mean, massive massive beaches they bring in all the sand and stuff it's, it's lovely in the summer etc and um you know, let's say you've got like an acre you've probably got an acre, maybe three acres of sand it's totally flat and you know, this guy was like, yeah, we'll put some rings on the ground. So he puts rings just with his finger and then he'd bury the truffle in those, um, covered over and then let the dogs go after them. He puts the ring there, of course, in case the dog doesn't find it, he can then go and say, well, I know it's in here somewhere. Otherwise it's just like lost in the expanse. Mm. And yeah, and Doug, Doug, he was just popping my left, right and center. And he was doing them in the back garden and it was, um, it was amazing. And what was particularly amazing actually, I must say is that, um, he he will find will place the truffle in the hole covered over with two two inches of sand or soil and he will go and find it immediately and the soil on top had not touched the truffle and you know it hadn't, hadn't mixed with it now usually in nature of course the truffle has been inside and under the ground and its stinky waft is going to slowly diffuse in all directions but largely up up and out and it's going to take a a while to permeate through the soil before the dog can smell that the truffle's there so 
Mm. On another fabulous bait style tangent, apologies, at the Sarlat truffle market, for instance, uh, the, sorry, the, the Sarlat kind of fetter truth, the, 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 the party, the truffle party, they always have a, a, a cavage, the, 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 the hunting of the truffle in they, they, they erect like a kind of fake truffier in the middle of the town and they show dogs finding truffles and how they find them. And even the guy doing them there, he doesn't actually have a legato. He ha, um, had um, a different type of dog. But he would be like, right, we're doing a demonstration at 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock. After the demonstration, he put the truffles in the soil where he wants the dog to then go and find them. And the reason he's doing this is because, and, and, and they say this, you need to give it time for the smell to be able to permeate through the soil for the dog to be able to find it. And we're like, well, bonzer, because Dougie doesn't seem to need that. He's just got such a good nose straight at it. And, you know, it comes down to, I suppose, a lot largely to do with genetics. I don't quite know how much stronger the olfactory system of the dogs is compared to us. I, I think it's in the order of like, you know, 10 to the magnitude to 10 to the 5. So it's like 100,000 times stronger than our noses, than human noses. So at least, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. And of course, let, let's not forget that they have they have the ability to sniff out of each nostril independently. So mm. it effectively gives them like a bit like echolocation with ears. It gives him kind of truffle location with his smell. He can he can you know, aroma location. He can and you watch them. They can isolate individual nostrils and they they sniff around the ground. You're like, and they're changing direction in order to target and to focus in on where the smell is coming from. And that's just so cool, the idea that yeah. you can effectively see a smell in three dimensions. I mean, like, you, th- you then think about your own nose and you go, pathetic, really, isn't it? It's just, it's nothing compared it to It would be fascinating and, and... if there was a way for us to see how dogs do see the world through their nose, because obviously it's probably yeah. as powerful as we see the world through our eyes, but they're just uh, exactly reversed. Just and, and, and this is, and this is, Exactly, and there I said what, what I said before about you know it makes me think of other kind of uh, members of the animal kingdom now, such as like you know, moles and and bats and stuff. And you know, if one sense is particularly strong, um, then it's less dependent on the other senses, and and therefore they start becoming you know less kind of um, important, and they kind of start getting a bit blurred out. And he, as I said, his eyes are rubbish. He, he really is just hopeless like i'll be if he, if someone's coming along and you know, knocking on the drive it's the poor post lady she gets it every time you know she comes along and it's like woo, 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 he's barking his little head off you're like oh dougie can you give her a break if i'm there 30 meters away he'll start barking like dougie it's me he's like oh sorry he's like can't you i'm, I'm literally 30 meters away if you can't see me can you smell me you know it's like hopeless he's, his eyes are absolutely rubbish but you know, his nose is, is wonderful and so is his temperament. You know, he's a fabulous family dog as well, so I'm not going to complain. And one final story actually was, I think the one that shocked me the most, just about how powerful the nose was, was when we visited um, one of the local kind of uh, uh, botanical gardens around here. Not, not botanical, it's you know, a, a beautiful, uh, um, I don't want to give away the name. <laughs> but the, that's, where I, that's, where I, that's where I that's where I find my truffles if I ever want to. But I, and I don't want them to know that I've been digging up truffles and their thing. Um, but it's a it's a beautiful garden um, near the Dordoin River. <laughs> I've definitely given away too much. There's a beautiful garden near the Dordoin River, and we were just walking around with him on the lead, and he was having a you know nice little day. The kids are having a wonderful time. It's a beautiful place, and he's pulling on the lead. I'm like, okay your dog put on the lead fine you know, he does that occasionally fine he's really pulling on the lead uh, no right okay come on mate off we go and we walk off to a different place about an hour later walking past the same place and he starts pulling again i'm like okay is that what is it and he's pulling I'm like, okay fine fine so he then drags me i allow him now to drag me about it must be it must be 15 meters he must drag me 15 10, 15 metres away from where I was standing, he dragged me and he got to the base of a tree and he just went biff, biff, biff and just sat there with this really smug look on his face as the truffles just popped out of the ground. And it was almost it was almost in his manner, the way he was kind of saying like, I did try and tell you, but you just weren't listening. And it was it was a number of things that amused me. One, his reaction by the fact that he wasn't trying to eat it. He he wasn't like there was no messing around. There, he was just like he just sat afterwards like there. It was really like yeah yeah I know better than you. It was a mixture of that that amused me. But also then suddenly my mind was thinking, hang on a minute. 
he smelt this thing underground from 10 meters away. It, it's beyond human comprehension because none of us have ever had the ability to detect something with our nose in that way. And it gives you an insight then into yeah. you know, the, the, the many incredible faculties of, of the animal kingdom and, 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 and the abilities that it has. It's like, how, how can you do that? How can you smell something underground 10 meters away? It's phenomenal. And then from then on, as I said, he just, he just, <clears throat> he finds them all over the place. And obviously with a nose that good, you then actually got a slight problem on your hands because then you think to yourself, right, so you live in an area, so you live on a road known to be basically the root of the truffles and there are truffle trees everywhere and there are like, I don't know, 20 truffle plantations within, you know, five, five minutes walk from our door and he likes digging them up. This could be a problem time to start putting in some properly good dog fencing because you know you then start yeah. worrying and, and no i mean on, this is this is this is this is genuine one of the old guys like the this guy is an absolute classic he's one he's one that's uh he his truffle plantation is next to ours he's so the end of our plantation there's a, a gap of maybe 50 meters of land and then his starts um he doesn't own the no we, neither of us own the land in between that so a bigger farm that owns that and um <clears throat> he uh he's this wild they even, they even call they, they 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 call him the wild man um and he is this kind of badger bearded old wizened frenchman that's kind of you know not necessarily the most socially developed and he's, uh, he's a heck of a character and he's he lives over the other side of the valley but his truffle plantation is here because he bought the land knowing that the site was good and um and he's one of the ones I was alluding to earlier about how he just, you know, rips out quite a lot each year. Um, and he comes knocking on the door um, and he says, you know, I've got a problem with your dog. I went, sorry, excuse me. I've got a problem with your dog. I said, what's your problem with my dog? And of course, this isn't just in rapid old elderly French, it's in elderly French with a dialect and you know I'm a scientist at heart so language doesn't necessarily fall easily upon me and this was a little bit of a challenge but I you know managed to ascertain that he has a problem with my dog I'm like what is the problem with my dog he's like he's been digging in my truffle fields and I went thank god I said no he hasn't wow. I said look around my garden what fence I know I'm the only person around here that actually bothers to keep his dog fenced in because the others just literally go go crazy they go where they like um i have put a fence in because i don't want my dog going off into my truffle field or the the, the truffle the trees that i have that are naturally producing truffles i don't want him just going over there and ripping them up and i certainly don't want him going and digging up another man's truffles because that is like i mean that's that is declaring shot, right? french right. Yeah. well right here no they're, they're too nice but I tell you what, you could you could end up. You, you, I don't even want to say it. It's 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 not good. I yeah. mean, the, the, if you if you take another man's mushrooms in France, the fines are like uh, I think it's like five thousand euros basic, and it's two years in jail kind of thing. They're, they guard their mushrooms, you know, and and truffles. I mean, you're going to get done on the highest possible thing here. That's the worst. And yeah, I mean, they mm. if you're not doing it with intention, then they, they're going to struggle to have a go at you. I mean, this guy, he can moan all he likes about, oh, you know, your dog is like, okay, after a few moments, he realized it wasn't my dog. I said, the dog stays in the garden, 100% under our, you know, uh, uh, observation uh, at all times, much more during the periods of November to March. In that time, he never, ever is out of eyesight, ever, because it's just, it's too stressful. You know, this guy walking around with, you know, turbo nose. Yeah. It's like, if he's gone out of my sight, I'm like, is he is, is he going off and going to eat someone's chickens? No, I don't, don't care about the chickens. Sorry, chickens. But I'm worried he's going to go and start turfing up. So it's like, right, no, no. He stays under control at all times. The guy was eventually convinced. And um, I said, in, in a way, I don't feel too sorry for the guy because he, he makes it, he, he does very well each year. He does very, very well. And he also does no work on his truffle plantation. He's, he's so basic in his methods. And that's fine. I have so much to learn from him. He's like a guru. And I happily absorb all the information I can from him, uh, mixing the, the kind of um, published scientific journal approach mixed with old world real knowledge. I mean, you know, Einstein said, you know, 
knowledge is no um, substitute for experience. Einstein's a, a clever fella, so I'm going to take you know I'm going I'm to listen to that advice, and I'm going to say to myself, right, yeah, they might do all the research in the labs, they might know this, that, and the other, but if there's a guy that's got a field 200 meters from my house, 500 meters from my house, and he's saying this works, this do that, I'm going to listen very, very carefully. Um, What's one of the so best things you've learned from him <clears throat> that you would class as old world advice that you've taken on board? Good question. <clears throat> I think there'd be a couple that stand out. I think one would be his first comments about not planting hazelnuts. Because for, for, for those that maybe don't know, and some of the listeners that aren't aware of the different species that are capable of hosting um, the tube melanus borum truffle, um, you can grow them under hazelnuts, a variety of oak trees, a, a whole host, a whole range of trees they can uh, will support uh, this ectomycorrhizal relationship. And the hazelnut is, is, is very tempting because it's far uh, quicker to grow. And as it's far qu for quicker to grow, you're likely to start seeing truffles earlier, maybe only after sort of five years, as opposed to kind of like the eight to 12 years that you're going to get with something like the evergreen oak. And I was like... Um, well, you know, we'll put in a few hazelnuts. We'll put in a few hazelnuts as well. And, you know, these guys always say, oh, yeah, it's a good idea to generally mix up the species to give a, you know, um, a diversity that, that they believe helps um, with the colonization. I was like, okay, fine. But then I was talking to this guy. He was like, uh, don't do hazelnuts. I said, okay, why not? He says, they're more susceptible by uh, being taken over by tuba bromale. The truffle I alluded to earlier, the the winter truffle, the mm. the, um, the the one that smells a bit of tar, that is a tenth of the price of the tube melon sporum, yeah. the perigord truffle. And I was like, what? Okay. I literally the next day went into the field and dug those. I only had luckily ten. Dug, dug those ten hazelnuts out. They were gone, and I dug a big bowl as well. They, they'd only been in for like you know six months, but they were gone. I planted them actually down the bottom of our garden, and I was like, I'll see if they're an experiment. If they make anything great, if not, I don't care. But he might have been talking nonsense, but when you have that, you're like, where's he got that information from? It's been passed down. He knows something I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take note of that. And then also, um, I think the, the best bit of advice that I gained from him and another classic old school French guy was, um, was about uh, how to harvest. Look, we go back to the, 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 original, the original statement that the quality and hence the value of this red truffle and the demand of it is in the aroma. So it's all about the getting it at maturity, harvesting the truffle at the right time. A dog can be trained to dig up a truffle. A dog is harder to train to dig up a truffle at the correct stage of development. So you're then facing the problem of, um, right, how do I get these truffles? How do I find them? And how do I harvest them at the right time? And that's when these guys start coming into their own and they start sharing with you little bits of information. You're like, okay, that's good. So it's not just a case of, you know, um, get down on your nose, get down on your hands and knees and start sniffing the soil and actually assessing the quality of the aroma yourself. It's not just about that. It was when they started introducing me to the idea of the truffle fly, which I didn't even know existed before. I didn't, I didn't know anything mm. about, I didn't know there was a specific fly called the truffle fly. Um, I can't remember his name, but he's this well, the Latin name for it. But he's this tiny little yeah. orange translucent fly. And my my first experiences of truffle hunting in this valley were not with a dog. They weren't with a pig. They were with a fly. And these old guys, um, flat caps on, setting sun, 4 p.m. December day, teaching me how to find a truffle with nothing more than a small stick. And a fly, and you're like, that's cool, that's really cool. That was the cleverest thing I've seen, and it's, it, it was something that I was like, I have never heard of this. I think you know anyone listening to this now will be like, yeah, got it. Pigs find truffles, dogs find truffles. Uh, I've heard pigs are better. It's like, well, yeah, maybe they're they're great at smelling, maybe they're better. I don't know, but you know, people lost fingers trying to get the truffle out of pigs, uh, you know, a pig's mouth at the end of it. But the fly, I mean, would, do you think the listeners would be interested in me just giving a little description about how the fly can be used? Yeah, definitely. I was just about to ask you that. So, yeah, go for it. Okay. So, so basically, 
as as we alluded to earlier, that, that it's not just I mean, there are a whole host of members of the animal kingdom that are interested in eating this little fungus. They want it, so um, luckily we can kind of harness that desire and the byproducts of you know, evolution to 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 better our ability to to, to find these little treasures. And so <clears throat> the the truffle fly is very small, but very recognizable, semi-translucent little orange fly, really, really little, really little thing. Um, it lays its eggs over the top of a mature truffle. It, it, it can smell it, can detect it. Of course, these volatile aromatic compounds are, are coming off the truffle all the time. And when it reaches a certain point, the truffle fly... Lands on the soil above the truffle, lays its eggs. They then uh, hatch. I almost said germinate then. They hatch and then they burrow down, and then it's goodbye truffle. And they then just eat all the truffle, which I'll just quickly say isn't always such a bad thing. We can come back to that later if we have time. I mean, obviously, not with all of them, but you know, the idea of, of, of taking all of the truffles you find out of your truffle plantation, not necessarily such a great idea. It's nice to have nature helping spread these spores about. Um, so yeah, the fly comes along, soil, down, hatch, blah, 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 does its thing. The truffle fly is only going to go and lay its eggs above the mature truffles. So what these guys were doing, and they were very, very nice to let me um, join in, I, I, the, the day I picked, I kind of suspect they'd been there. I'd seen them out there doing it before. And I thought, and I saw the weather. As I said, it's that su setting sun, beautiful, crisp um, winter, late, late autumn, early winter kind of afternoon. I was like, they're so going to be there. So I took the off chance. I went up there and they were. I was like, oh, is there any chance? I'm like, oh, just happened to have my telephoto with me as well. You know, any chance I can join in? They're like, yeah, of course. And um, they're just slowly walking around under the truffle trees, the long switch, kind of like, you know, just a long stick of hazel or something like that. And they're just gently tapping. They're just gently tapping the ground around the uh, the base of the trees. So what are these guys doing? And they're waiting for a little fly to suddenly go and fly up from the ground. And when they do, they identify quite easily which fly it is you know it's not going to be like a house fly but they'll they'll say is that the fly i'm after if when they spotted the truffle fly and um <clears throat> as i said if anyone's interested they can go and i i wrote an article about this experience in more detail with some photos um when you spotted the truffle fly you say okay came from around about there you walk off go to another bit you maybe find another one you then come back to where you saw the first one and you have another little prod and it goes up again. You're like, right, okay. Now this little fly is showing to me that there's something there. So they just took some small sticks, six six inches long, and they poke them in the ground, and they just leave it there. And then they walk off, and they're walking around the truffle field a little bit more. And then it's... And I managed to get a photo of this little fly resting on the stick that they were using as a marker for the truffle they believe this fly had found there's not a dog in sight no pigs or anything it's just mm. two old dudes big noses flat caps just every cliche under the sun with sticks and awesome and like, okay <clears throat> and then they went over to a, they took me to, over to another um, place where they'd already got some sticks and these, then you look around the, this, this little this their little truffle plantation, this, this particular section, you're like, loads of sticks here. Quite a lot of these little sticks just poking out of the ground. And they went over and they're like, yeah, this is really strange because I've got my stick there because there's still, there's still, the fly is still going there. I took out last week from this, this, this tiny patch, you know, that big, I, I took out there two truffles just a week ago, but the fly is still coming back. It's still coming back every single time I go near it, the fly is there. Uh, but I had a look. I couldn't find anything. I had a look, you know, half an hour ago, couldn't find anything. I said, oh, that's a shame. He said, oh, look, we'll have, we'll have one last, we'll have one last go. Why not? So he goes over and he yanks the stick out of the ground. And then, yeah, out comes the very useful and trusty uh, truffle finding implement, the screwdriver. Uh, and he just starts smashing up the soil around the region that he's doing. He's gently kind of prying it up and loosening, loosening it up. And he's jumbling, he's jumbling, jumbling in this like 
30 seconds later, bang, in his hand, two, one tennis ball-sized truffle and one golf ball-sized truffle. And you're just like, well played. <laughs> like, you, you so know they things that I don't. The, they put the stick in the ground, fly went on the yep. stick, and then are they taking the truffle out that same day? Or are you saying they come back later to see if the fly's still there on a subsequent day and then casting it? Well, in this particular instance, he had the stick there for like a week because he'd already done a similar method. He'd gone around finding flies and he put some markers in. He'd sniffed the soil. He'd made some you know, assessments of his own. By the fact the fly kept on going back to this same spot, he came to the conclusion there must be another truffle down there because if not, it would have gone by now because the, the aroma compounds, if the truffle's gone, there's no truffle, there's no truffle left, there's no smell. Why is the fly going back to the same point? You know, Therefore, there must be another truffle down there. And as I said, okay. if, if the fly is going so there, it's already it's taken one truffle it's, it's out mature. a week prior. It'd already yeah, take one truffle out a week prior. But let, I think you're taking a, I think you're taking a few. Yeah, yeah, and and there's sticks kind of all over the place, and they will go along and they will have a sniff, and um, it's you see, it's 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 much more complicated than just like oh, um, go to sleep for kind of you know nine months of the year, wake up mid sort of just December, white the, the sort of the <clears throat> the the sand from your eyes and then march into your truffle field and start looking for flies. It's more subtle than that because let's not forget that it's actually by around August time the truffles are at maximum size. They've swelled to to to, to their to their final their final volume, and then the next few months, the, the next the, the subsequent three or four months is just you know the maturing process, uh, maturation process where they, mm. where they where they begin to take on their character and quality um, that people are looking for. And so, um, by August, you get indications of where the truffles are. So these guys already know where a lot of the truffles are before it even gets to, you know, November, October. They know where they are. And some of the big uh, hints for that are bulging of the earth. So these truffles, they grow, you know, typically in these things, maybe let's say five centimeters under the soil. Right, five centimeters. That's pretty a pretty good average. Um, some might be right under the surface, and some might. You know, the other week I dug some down that were maybe about ten. But so let's say typically five centimeters. Well, you know, you put um, a pin pinhead sized object inside the uh, te- five centimeters below the soil. In August, it's hot here. It's dry. Um, the hopefully you get some good rains, some summer rains, because that helps swell the truffles tremendously. That's one of the, the the main things that you know gives you a good yield. So the the truffle then starts expanding. Well, if you take this pinhead type um, spore and then um, and then it uh, or sorry this uh, truffet I believe it's actually called truff, trufflet. It might be a trufflet, and it, it it starts to then develop and swell. If that suddenly turns into the size of a tennis ball, or in some cases a grapefruit, or or a small pumpkin, you know we've seen some in markets being like one point eight one point four kilos, just enormous things, just bonkers well the earth above it is of course going to is going to r- r- rise up and it's going to then crack and and you can actually see in the summer you can see these and and i've been taken around other the, the, the guy for instance the, 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 where dougie came from his breeder they've taken us to their tr- their truffle plantations before with their dogs and they've in the middle of the summer gone there's one 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 and they, they, just, they just they just know where they are so it's uh it's not just a case of like, right, we now start in mid-December. You're already pretty clued up by the time it hits, um, yeah, like uh, September. You should have a pretty good idea. And you'll see them in their, in their, in their, in their truth years um, around this time, uh, already citing things out. Some of them, I think, I think some, some of the guys, the old, an old, old Italian trick would be then to, to take a few grains of barley, wheat, and just drop them by this truffle. Because then, when the autumn rains arrive, they then germinate and they just sprout up, and then you have these little wheat or barley markers In where the truffle cases, yeah. is, and then you're yeah. already knowing where you're likely to find it. So the truffles, you know, they know where it is. And I said, there I say, I never knew any of this stuff when I was in the UK. I don't think there's, I don't know if there even is a kind of um, uh, a word of mouth network of people passing down this information you get. I don't think it, it, it even exists there um, anymore. I, I'm certainly not aware of it. Ho- hopefully there will be one day. 
um, and with things like this, it will help. But this guy is, yeah, um, yeah cool. so so going, going back to the, 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 the original tale, so they already know roughly where some of them are. Some of them are surprised, wonderful, and they have these sticks, and this flies there, bing, goes back to it, buh, 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 up it goes, and he very kindly, uh, you know, dumps one of the truffles in my hand and says, you know, little gift, and uh, and we get to take that home and enjoy it. But so it was, and the thing is, though, I know there's more. I know there's more. I've got to, there's more. I've got to get out of these old geezers. They're yeah, they're sure. they're a res they're a reservoir of knowledge, and I intend to uh, I intend to get it. Um, and uh, and uh, but. Uh, but then there's more. I mean, like you know, for instance, we're we're members of the North Truffle, uh, North Truffle, North Sarlap Truffle Association, and uh, they invite us to go on. We pay a small annual fee, uh, and they invite us to go on various uh, almost like days out, it's like WI type stuff. They go like you know, come and observe the proper methods of pruning the trees in order to you know increase your yields or reduce risk of this or blah blah or um for instance there's one that i think is i think it's next week actually it's come to this truffle plantation which after um 10 years is struggling to get into good production uh we're going to analyze the site as to why it's not producing as well as we would hope why it's at the moment a little bit of a disappointment um it's a it's a it's a south facing slope I mean, to me, I've got to say, I think one of the things they're going to say is that this thing is being baked to death. I mean, if you're south facing out on the slope, it's literally just like you couldn't get you couldn't get any hotter. So it's probably a case it's just too mm. dry. That the truffles are just um, are, are struggling to get swelling of any kind whatsoever. Um, and as such, if you can't get many truffles in there, well, that means that that region, that maybe that whole hill they're on, there's not going to be many truffles there at all. In which case, the animals aren't going to be eating them and depositing them. In. So it, it just generally isn't a very, you know. It's just not, unfortunately, a great site. And they're going to have to start manipulating things. That can be done. You know, you can, you, I could tell your viewers now how to how to set up their own truth here back in England. It's not difficult. Uh, really, really is not difficult. It's not rocket science. Um, but, yes, yeah, so it's quite nice I'm, that we get I'm, to go along and, um, and chat to I hate to interrupt you, Chris. Great. I hate to interrupt you. And I can definitely, um, you know, um, talk much further. And we may have to do a part two. But uh, I'm rapidly conscious we're running out of time or i'm running out of time mm. um but uh, yeah, i just wanted yep. to um uh i mean i'll mention in the introduction again about your uh you know your business and things like that but i thought i just wanted to give you a quick opportunity as well just to share um a couple of sentences or whatever you want about the the truffle tree business and also i know you've got some some jeets some holiday villas i mean danny and i have already been thinking considering putting that on our bucket list as well um, but huh. before I give you just a chance to wrap up and just say a final few words, um, you know, I just want to say thank you very much for uh, your time today. This has been eye-opening, enlightening, and undoubtedly one I'll listen back to a few times. But um, yeah, tell us about mm. how you know listeners can get more from you, find out a bit more about the the Black Diamond Truffle Tree business that you've got going on. Um, yeah, okay. Go, go yeah, well, I mean, I suppose we um, we. We decided to plant out the, the the truffle trees as soon as we could, as I mentioned before. And after planting them, it's like, well, you know, they're, we're going to be waiting. We're going to be waiting some time before they produce. Uh, we've got two choices. We can start running a, a truffle tree adoption scheme, much like uh, many people have adopted out oh, anything these days from from a row of vines in a in a Burgundian vineyard. Um, you know, all kinds. Well, my of parents things have adopted so, a donkey. <laughs> there you go um i don't know if i want donkey truffles uh <laughs> although i'm sure they have a very i'm sure they have a very ripe aroma um yeah the um the yes yeah, so the idea was what we what we do is we would adopt out uh we, I don't, we did not invent the the scheme it was not our you know we was not we didn't invent the idea at all but uh from having studied some other businesses that had done similar things we did realize one thing and that is that um the, the general rule of truffles it uh, is um if you're thinking of starting a truffle plantation the best sign you're going to get is are there any and this is it literally are there any truffles growing in your area if there are that's a very good sign if there aren't then it's a bad sign because it's suggesting that 
just conditions aren't right. But we're surrounded, so it's like that's fabulous. So we realised that we had this chance to to set up a business where we could adopt out trees uh, with some pretty high certainty of there being returns, and the returns are potentially very lucrative. Um, you can get up to ten thousand you know euros out of just one one tree one tree in its in its production span. And so we thought what we'd do is we would adopt out a fixed percentage of the trees making sure we have some back for ourselves. Now that we've bought some more land, it's, it's, it's better. But we decided to adopt out a number of the trees so that we could then bring in some money to fuel purchases of further land and machinery, look at different methods, be part of associations, spend more time in the field. So then later when it comes to the harvest time, those that have invested, they get a return and then we too get a return, and yeah, the, the this this system is quite simple. You you purchase a tree, you get a certificate, um, a lovely photo of your tree, um, and it gives you the very least. It gives you a discount on the the sheets that we have here, which are not not it's not a bad place to be. You know, we've got a nice uh, um, kind of sixteenth century uh, Perigordian farm with an infinity pool and. 20, 30 acres of land to walk around in um, with incredible views. So it's, it's got Dreaming. a lot of very appealing things to it. So, that, I mean, that's good in itself. And, it, and then you pay a maintenance fee of um, about one, one pound a week. Um, one pound a week. And, and you get to be in part of it. And then after eight or uh, 10 years, then the truffles start appearing. They, they bloody better do one. They'd be really, really, really. <laughs> Um, all the signs are and then so your favor, uh, you're not gonna have well i gotta say they <laughs> are i like Dougie the fact the road yeah, yeah exactly god bless the fence um yeah exactly so it's a case of way that we do have um some other packages like for instance a lot of people um a by by a mature tree i say mature it's not like 20 years old but it's it's one of the early trees we planted so people also have the opportunity to purchase a tree and save themselves a, you know a good number of years later. So, oh there's a massive hiss just appearing there maybe they don't like they can do you get that then there's a massive hissing there it, it's and probably I'll, um I'll, 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 I'll keep rambling probably my um, yeah so people can Okay, so people can basically they can adopt a slightly older tree, and it will just reduce the uh, the waiting time by um, by hopefully a good a good few years because the trees are already uh, established and um, and you know we we another reason why we're and there's another reason why we're not certainly not going to want to keep some of the trees for ourselves. <laughs> Where am I going to suddenly adopt out all these things and miss out on potential benefits? But another another reason that's good not to do so is it means it gives us the opportunity. So that we can, um, if a tree dies or you know can happen, then we can then replace it exactly like for like you know if you've got an eight year old tree and it's like, dear cousin, sorry your tree died, but we've given you a new one. It's like how old's it? One year old. I mean that's just that's just you've been you've been done. So we can then just replace it with another eight year old tree like the tree next door, uh, and yeah. So it's it's a way of people being involved in in um this 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 truffle world over in france uh they get a chance to, to be part of that they can come visit their tree they can stay in the sheets um yeah so it's, it's a it's a project that seems to be working very well and many of the guests uh, come and rent the um sheets end up uh going away having adopted uh adopted trees and with the new land that we've bought we're now looking at expanding and planting out um, a lot more trees plans to go up to around about uh, one or one and a half thousand trees in total um, and then then my truffle planting days will be done or at least for now well it sounds amazing um and I, I, people can go to your website black black diamond truffle trees.com or check you out on instagram yep, and go to black. black black diamond truffle trees yeah, I think so. I think to be fair, though, we've we've kind of moved away. We seem to find that the market wasn't so interested in the, the Facebook and uh, Instagram side of things. Um, so yeah, the best place is to just head over to the website, Black Diamond Truffle Trees, and uh, there's loads of um, you know nice information on there anyway. Nice little articles to read for for, for your listeners who are who are interested. In um, like to discover some. 
we try and keep that updated every every month or so um and um yeah it's a, it's a way of just sort of spreading a little bit of that french local tapped knowledge uh around the globe it's the um that's the place to go black diamond truffle trees awesome well thank you it's been uh it's been a pleasure and yeah, thank you for having me. Just about survived the, the length of going all dodgy. Um, but yeah, yeah, um, I can yeah, I can hear some mad hissing. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't come across on the final end product, but um, all good. Um, yeah, thanks very much for your time, Chris. Oh, and, uh, one you. final thing to final thing to mention is that um, I did put on uh, the this kind of one of these things like tune in to the end of the video to find out a special code for your listeners. Um, I did actually put a coupon discount code for anyone listening to this podcast. If they type in, oh, I hope you can remember what I called it. I, I think I wrote it instead. I think it's Sweet Truffles 20 uh, in capitals, Sweet Truffles 20. Then you'll get a 20% discount off anything you purchase on the website. So that's just open to people. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. I'll make sure that's in the, uh, the notes and description, et cetera. Um, but that's great have a lovely day and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend hmm. thanks for having me lovely to talk to you there it is I hope you enjoyed that episode um, if you did I'd really appreciate it if you shared it with somebody that you cared about who you also think might enjoy this episode and finally just before you go if you are interested in learning about truffle dog training whether you want to come to one of my next upcoming truffle dog workshops or you want to learn from me in some other way or you just want to get access to my free beginner's guide then just head over to truffleforager.com enter in your email and sign up for my um, email list i'll send you that free guide and then you'll be the first to hear about when i am launching workshop dates when i am launching uh, the online community with the truffle dog training curriculum inside there you'll be the first to hear of everything so just head on over to truffleforager.com sign up join the email list you can also ping me an email as well if you've got any direct questions or stuff that you'd like me to help you out with in the interim i'd love to hear more about you your dog your your challenges your goals what you would like to achieve because i'm on a mission this year to help 100 dog teams find their first wild truffles so i'd really love for that to be you so go to truffleforager.com and sign up and get on my email list my name's ben sweet your guide to hunting truffles with your dog